All right, guys, so I'm going to do a look on myself today. It's something that I did very similar to the look I did last week on my friend Julie, and it is starting with the tape. So you want to make sure you have some eye cream on and you've taken off some of the adhesive on the back of your hand. And then you want to take great care in placing those tape strips so that the angles go from the outer corner up in a diagonal line, but the same sort of diagonal, so not one is wider or sharper than the other. Then from there, I'm taking a little bit of MAC Paint Pot in Groundwork, and I'm putting it very thinly all over the eyes. I'm taking this lightest color all the way on that right side, and I'm going to put it all over the lid to set the MAC Paint Pot in place. So now I'm going to have a nice long-wearing shadow. This will also make any other color that we put on top, namely this next warmer kind of melon color into the crease. It's going to make everything just really blend nicely. So if you don't see every color, that's okay. It's just really about the blendability and you're going to build up gradually one, two, three, and then just kind of get darker as you proceed. And I like to go in that outer corner and I have it flush against that tape. So we're going to get a nice sharp wing moving into this warm kind of rust color. Um, it doesn't really matter what colors you use. These just all happen to be matte, and I'm working from the Kat Von D palette. This is the first uh, shade and light palette. It's all matte colors, and they're really lovely to work with. I absolutely love this palette. Um, I wish that I could use it more, actually. It's just like, it's like one of those just really fabulous palettes that you just want more and more of. So I'm getting a little darker and darker and then just kind of using my brush right into the natural crease. And I'm just kind of building on the own architecture that I have. Creases, I'm just making it deeper. Where the brow bone is, I'm just wanting to lift it. Where the shape is a little bit almond, I just wanna make it more almond-like. So I'm taking this MAC 266 brush, which is a slanty thin brush, good for brows and liner. And I'm not even using a liquid liner. This is just black eyeshadow. And since these colors are so dark and matte, they work really well as liners too. So I'm just kind of working slowly to get that wing just how I want it. And that tape here is really gonna help you as well. Then once I've got the wing how I want it, then I'm going in with a MAC 217 and then a pencil brush just to kind of smoke it out so you can see the wing, but it's just a little bit softer on the edges, not so sharp. I feel like that's kind of like the trend that we're going to. It's not necessarily so sharp, although sharp will always be in style. It's just nice sometimes to kind of smoke it out and have a little bit of the best of both worlds, smoky and winged eye. Okay, fast forwarding, I'm taking the Kat Von D Shimmer Palette, which is kind of like the sister palette to the Shade and Light Palette matte one. And these are all similar colors, but they're all shimmery. And I'm just taking these shimmery colors. First, I used like a brownie shimmer on the lid. And now I'm using a lighter kind of like champagne shimmer on the brow bone. So what it does is it just adds a little more light. It's a little less formal. It's a little less strict. It just kind of adds a little shimmerness and shimmerness. I don't even know if that's a word, but it just adds a little shimmer so that it just seems a little more playful and fun and summery and, you know, kind of easy on the eyes. So because I have such dramatic eyeliner and makeup, it's really important that I spend some time with my brows, just making them a little bigger, making them a little fuller, making them a little more defined. And I kind of change my brows depending on what my eye look is. So this one is kind of like Mommy Dearest. It's very severe, as you can see. Um, and they're going to blend in eventually as we go. Okay, so now I've started to apply the foundation. I'm actually using a Graftobian HD foundation, which is kind of like professional stage makeup, but it shoots really well if you're taking photos, and it feels really great on your skin, and it doesn't break me out, and they come in all kinds of wonderful colors. So I started with the first color, which is really like my skin tone, and then I was like, you know what? I am going all out today. I'm going to do contour and everything because I never do contour in my videos. And I started to do it more in my life, just like doing a little contour here and there, maybe because it's summer and I'm kind of playing with bronzer anyway. But I'm just starting to add a little more shape to my face. Now, I will keep in mind that as I get older, my face gets thinner. It's just the way I age. So... Whereas 20 years ago, I might have needed a lot more chisel in my cheekbone. I kind of have that anyway. So if you're like me, you don't want to chisel too much because you'll just make yourself look kind of old. But it can add a nice bit of depth 
and contour, and I'm kind of doing the top of my forehead to make my humongous forehead look smaller. I'm doing my jawbone. I'm going down the lines in my neck. Um, and we're going to blend everything in with a Dampen Beauty Blender. And I kind of was just going for it. It was like so fun. Um, so I just fast forwarded all through that. You really want to make sure your contour is blended out. That's really the most important. So I find I put the contour on with a synthetic brush if I'm using a cream contour. And then I go in with a Dampen Beauty Blender just to kind of blend everything out. Then once I did that, then I went in with this NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Vanilla, which is the lighter of the colors that I use. And I'm just adding it to the center of my face under my eyes, and I'm really amping up that highlight. When you use the lighter color, it kind of works with the contour. So you've got light, so you've got dark, so you've got depth and contour. So now I'm going in with a little bit Laura Mercier translucent powder, letting that bake under the eyes. And then this is a new product that I've been using. It's the Urban Decay Velvetizer. And I've been using this new fancy brush that my husband gave me for my birthday. It's a Tom Ford brush and it's so fabulous. Um, so I'm just kind of putting that velvetizer all over my face and it sets the makeup really, really nicely. And it's so micro finely milled. It's so now I'm going over with a little bit of traditional powder bronzer and a little bit of blush. So I took a clean uh, blush brush and I just kind of buffed off all the excess powder so everything's kind of blended in. So now the eyes, the brows, the face is pretty much done. It's time to clean up under the eyes and just give me a little bit of line there. Now that I've done the concealer and, and all that blending, I usually save under the eye for then because chances are you're gonna have to redo it if you conceal after. So I do that and I just kind of line everything in. I like a warm color under the eyes when I'm doing this dramatic look. I just find it's like easier to wear. So some eyelash curling and false lashes would be really great with this look. I just sometimes get lazy and I don't do them on myself, but I almost always put them on clients. So lots of mascara. This is a new L'Oreal one that I'm absolutely loving. It's called Lash Paradise. I think it might be the best drugstore mascara I've ever used. Um, wand if you see it's kind of tapered almost like an hourglass wand so I'm doing lots of mascara and that really bumps it up plus the shape of this liner really makes your lashes look a little bit bigger anyway and then I'm taking a nude lip liner this is Urban Decay 24 7 and is that, it's, it's an Urban Decay lip liner I think it's called Naked and then Chanel Gracile lipstick um, I found that lipstick was a little cool in tone, although I love this color, but then I added a little bit of Urban Decay Fuel, which is like a peachier color, and I thought that that worked really well with the blush. Now, because we were contouring, I just took a little bit more of lip liner, but this is a darker color in Whirl, and I did under my lip to add a little shadow to make my lip look bigger. And since I did that, I had to put a little shimmer on the inner corners and on the cupid's bow. So there's hair up, and then I'm fighting with my hair to get it down. It should be done. It should be like a bouffant or something. But that is the finished look. I hope you like it, and let me know what you think in the comments below.